Right, I feel the need to address the explosion of comments on the last video about the proper way to make tea. Now, uh, keeping my research skills sharp and uh, intrigued by the number of people who thought that I was a heathen, I've decided to look up where this whole uh, palaver, frankly is the only word for it, comes from. And I haven't finished yet, and um, I may even write something up on this because I'm that sad and uh, you all seem to be that interested, but it appears to boil down to a class distinction, uh, us British being known for our rigid social class structure, certainly in the past, and it still kind of hangs on now, and uh, you can probably tell from the way I said past that I'm not entirely posh. In fact, my, uh, my mum was what's known as uh, upper middle class, and my dad was uh, from Hartlepool in the... Uh, Northeast of England, so I'm a bit of a mixture, which probably explains why I put in my milk first when using a teapot. So, uh, this is not an instructional video by any means, however, uh, first thing you would need to make tea, the British tea that is, in any, uh, or Commonwealth tea as well, um, in any sort of approved fashion, is of course a teapot. Unless you're making it in a cup or a mug with a tea bag, which is perfectly acceptable, depending upon the bag. Um, now, tea cosy is quite important to keep the pot warm because boiling water has to go in here, whether it's bags or leaves. It's got to be boiling water, and all of the historical sources agree with this as well. You can boil you to death of those if you wish. And uh, some some teapots come with a a rather splendid built-in uh, tea cosy, which uh, hopefully you can see what this is. Uh, an interesting product that was available a few years ago that I couldn't resist. Anyway, so boiling water and tea leaves are in there. Now, my preferred type of um, British tea, for want of a better term, a heavy Sam bias tea, is uh, this stuff. Uh, other, other blends are available. This is Betty's Tea Room Blend. That's what's in this pot. As I said, bags are acceptable. And here's a box of the bag version of the same stuff. Yorkshire, Yorkshire Gold, uh, at a push PG tips, if, you know, you're in the middle of a viral pandemic or something. Uh, you need your milk, and therefore a receptacle for it, so there's some there. Only an amateur would attempt to make loose leaf tea without a strainer, so we have a strainer there. And of course, uh, as I'm on my own for this, just one solitary cup. It's a proper china, bone china, porcelain, essential for the proper British style version of tea, if you like. Now, this is where I would break with what turns out to be etiquette, because when I look this up, uh, all you people saying I'm a heathen are, in fact, right, and by association, Ian, because that was, in fact, his pot of tea that was being made at the beginning of that video. So um, it's not just me, it's, it's him as well. Now, he's got the excuse of not being British, I suppose. I haven't. Now, so how did this come about, and why am I rambling on about class? Well, as it turns out, now, I look this up. This is in an, in an American etiquette book, which I think is uh, interesting, but I suppose this is how you teach other people etiquette. Needless to say, I don't follow any aspect of etiquette anyway, so it's unsurprising that I would get the milk thing wrong. So, anyway, <laughs> Dorothea Johnson, which sounds like a British name, but isn't. Um, this is actually a relatively modern American etiquette book called Tea and Etiquette, pages 74 to 75. And she said, don't put the milk in before the tea, because then you cannot judge the strength of the tea by its colour. Uh, with, of course, the incorrect spelling of colour. And, uh, and then it says, don't be guilty of this faux pas. So, uh, that, that tells you it's a bit of a, uh, it's an etiquette thing, not necessarily a scientific thing, but she does claim that you can't judge the colour, which a number of you did say. And I uh, do sympathise with, occasionally I will have an off day, and I will pour uh, a poor cup of tea, which is a, a bad day for all concerned, even if it's just me. Um, well, my wife as well, I she'll complain um, worse. So, there's that. Uh, on page 75, she says, Good reasons to add milk after the tea is poured into a cup. So, advocating for the contra view, of course, there. Now, uh, I like the fact that the top reason is the butler in the popular 1970s television programme 
upstairs, downstairs, you have to be of a certain vintage to recognise that, and of course be British, kindly gave the following advice to the household servants who were arguing about the virtues of adding milk before or after the tea is poured. Those of us downstairs put the milk in first, while those upstairs put the milk in last. And that, as it turns out, from what I've seen of all the other sources that I could find on this, um, sums it up. So it was a, a bit like the pinky finger thing, which was fashionable among the upper classes. Uh, the lower classes then copied it, and therefore it became unfashionable. This is true as well. You can look this up. Similar, similar sort of thing seems to have happened here, that it was fashionable um, at one time to put the milk in first, or at least, at least that's what we think. I'm coming to that in a minute. And then it, certainly it became fashionable to put the milk in last, and somehow that's that's where so so people have fallen on two lines. Now, I'm not saying it's a class thing now, but it, the advice was along these lines that it was if you were um, working class, you would put the milk in first because you didn't know better, and if you were upper class, you did know, and therefore you put the milk in last, with this sort of semi scientific justification that it was to do with getting the colour and therefore the taste right, which I absolutely do agree with, by the way. Um, and just just to confirm this, um, this is from the same source. Never normally work with a single source, but you know, time is limited on this one. So, uh, da, 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 da. According to the English writer Evelyn Waugh, who some of you might have heard of, all nannies and many governesses put the milk in first. So again, these were working class women who were making tea the way they'd been taught. Um, uh, and, then, and then, by the way, Queen Elizabeth II adds the milk in last. So obviously if the Queen does it, then it must be right. Anyway, where am I going with this? Well, apart from making myself a cup of tea, um, and I'm going to risk doing it the, my traditional way first. Just a bit, a bit of milk. Because if you get the brew sufficiently strong, you don't have to worry about whether you put it in first or last. That's the secret to this uh, near civil war level of debate that we appear to have kicked off here. And then we, oh, nearly forgot the strainer, because I'm on camera. Pour that in. And, uh... The flaw here is that I can't now show you the colour of the of the tea in here, but I'll do that as a cutaway, and you'll have to believe me. But I might I might even do it in a single take just to prove that I'm not uh, faking this. So that was milk in first. Now I could add a little bit more to milk to that, and you might argue that's that's justification enough to say do it last, Ferguson, because then you get it right first time. But uh, well, I'll show you in a minute what the colour looks like. But I'm just going to taste test this because uh, we do like it strong over here. Yep, and still nicely hot, almost scalding the palate there. That's how we like it. Now, I am not going to criticise. I admit that I was wrong in terms of the received way of doing it. Um, I think either way actually is fine. But it is interesting how little foibles like this, uh, that are a bit of fun and a bit of a bit of banter, turn out to be based in a bit of history. So uh, that's the level of research you can expect if you buy my book. Um, although I don't think at the moment we have an annex in there, a stretch goal, about tea. But you're getting this video instead. So. Anyway, um, I'm going to enjoy this tea. Um, and I'm going to persuade Ian to edit um, in a shot of this. Because that is very nice. Um, actually, just so, that you, just so that you believe me, I'm just going to bring you in here and try and show you. There we go. Look at that. Look at that. Colour of He-Man's face. First time, milk in first. Now, I've just thought of another aspect, which I said I was going to mention and then didn't, which is... Whoa, you can tell how amateur this is. This is, in fact, an iPhone. <laughs> Uh, which is that some claim that the milk would go in first because otherwise the porcelain might crack. Which, um, apparently, who came up with this? Samuel Twining, apparently, of the Twining's company, fame, noted tea makers, theorised that this was done to stop early China from cracking in reaction to boiling water. Which our friend Dorothea remarks, uh, this theory appears rather shaky today since boiling water is not poured directly into the cup. Uh, meaning, of course, poured into the teapot. So, take that or leave it. I think that's a bit of a retrospective um, justification for what's really a bit of fashion. And it's um, eerily reminiscent of the old big end, little end 
which bit of your egg do you cut off uh, if you're vaguely familiar with classic literature there which I am vaguely familiar with anyway I've rambled on enough I'm going to finish off my tea and uh, thank you again to everyone that's been buying my book I'm most grateful 